first part we're going to talk about in terms of hitting is the proper grip of the bat. The first thing that we're going to look at, the knuckles that we would knock on a door with, we're going to line up and go with. We're not going to line up the other knuckles and the reason why we do that, if my knuckles are lined up this way or uneven, my body is going to be uneven and it's going to be hard to keep my bat level. If my knuckles are lined up the knuckles that I knock on a door with, I'm going to be able to stay in a straight level line and I'm also going to be relaxed. The second part of our grip is we need to stay relaxed. If I'm squeezing the bat so much that there's sawdust coming off of it, I'm going to be too tense to keep my bat level. So I'm going to be a nice relaxed grip, but strong enough that I can keep my knuckles lined up. The next part that we're going to talk about is our stance and where to set up in the batter's box. The first thing that we talk about with our stance is being able to be relaxed and also being in an athletic position, which means keeping our feet spread out in line with our shoulders and our knees pinched in. So when we get into the batter's box, the first thing that we're going to think about is being relaxed, getting our feet shoulder width apart, pinching our knees in, and being ready to swing. A reference point for coaches where a player should stand, if you look at the corner of home plate, where that corner juts out, that's where their front foot is going to line up with. Because when we make contact, going up the middle, we would like the barrel of the bat and the ball to make contact right where that front foot is. So it's just a great reference point to start with as, with their players. As they get older and they start adjusting more, that's when you can start changing where they set up. But it's a good starting point. After completing your setup and your stance, the pitcher is now ready to throw the ball to the hitter. So what we need to do first is establish our head and our view to the pitcher. Our first movement, we have to go back to go forward with our body. There has to be a negative movement backwards so that we can go forward. We do so by rocking our body back and going forward. So it's just back to forward. Once I do that and I go forward, I'm going to create separation for my hands with my hips. So I've now generated power. So some of the common issues with this as a hitter, or as a coach watching a hitter, instead of going back to go forward, there's only a movement forward with their swing. Or a coach will see a hitter going forward, so they'll tell their hitter to stay back, or keep their hands back, and now you'll see a hitter set up and stay back and not go forward and just go in with their swing. If we can fix that by getting some rhythm and establishing going back to going forward and separating, our knob of our bat is going to be pointing to the catcher. That creates separation. A common issue with that, if my knob points up, if my knob points to the wall, if it points to the ball. If my knob can point to the catcher, when I separate, when I go back to go forward, I'm now in an athletic position to hit. A common question that we receive is how long a stride should be with a hitter. When we talk about a stride, there are certain styles that everybody has, whether it is a toe tap, a knee tuck, a leg lift, or just a step, whatever stride they can use to be in an athletic position is the key. If they overstride and now they take too far of a step and they end up over their body, they're not going to make it work and everything's going to be off. If I can maintain my stride maybe six inches or so and make that work where I'm still in an athletic position at foot strike, now I can be a good hitter. The last phase of our swing is after we get into our athletic position and we're in a launch position, now we need to transfer the energy from our feet into our hands and through the ball. And the way we do that, if we start from the ground up and we bring our body in a straight line, I'm going to drive my knee, get on my toe, and bring my hands straight through to the ball. If you notice, my eyes and my head have not moved and they're staying directly on the baseball all the way through your swing. Some common issues that we see with this are as if a hitter works from the top down. After they get to this athletic position, they just use their upper body and their lower half doesn't do any of the work. Everything takes over, their head's going to fall off, and everything's not going to work. 
Another common issue that we see, if they work from the ground up but their head moves, all of a sudden my eyes are going to take me to where my rotation is. So my eyes go, my swing goes off. So the easy fix with that, if I keep my eyes on the ball through target, if I let the ball get as deep as possible, and I keep my eyes on target, now once I let my lower half do the work, I get on my, my toe, my knee, everything comes through, my eyes are staying still, hands are going straight through, finish. We're going to say that we're going to finish with both hands so that we can maintain our posture all the way through. If we release with our other hand too early, my balance might fall off and then I'm in a bad spot. If I can maintain my swing all the way through, now from here all I have to worry about is running to first base.